the Airfix Mitsubishi A6M 2B0. Just a quick rundown on kit. Design and tooling were 2011. States there. And decal schemes and pack design 2011. It's a. Uh, I don't know where I went for the level. They always tell you a level on them. Oh, yeah, skill level. <laughs> skill level one. You get a one flying hour if you're interested in that. One decal scheme by the looks, because that's on the back. Quick thing of what paint you might want to use. There you go. Right, let's get into the kit. See what we get in this box. Instructions, decals, that's from 2011 as you can imagine, they're very nice decals, as in for feel, they're not big fat ones. Very simple instruction sheet, two, three, set, three main pages of it, all in black and white. Get the sprues out the bag. And a quick look, and that's all it will be before I start building. Sprue one with the pilot. There's the pilot. Come on, focus. So, oh, there you go. Yep, there's spur one. And pilot, a little bit of detail on inside again. A little bit of detail again on inside there. It's not too bad for ones. 76 scale engines, wheels, wings. That one. More wings, tail. Looks like where the uh, seat and that's going to go, and the propeller. As I say, just a quick show you. No point taking that out of the bag. It is one clear canopy piece, and it's just on its own. Nothing else with it. Right, I'll take these off now, these three sprues, and I will wash them in warm soapy water, as they recommend. And I'll see you in a minute. Right, all dry, back from being washed. I'll just use a little bit of uh, washing up liquid in warm water. Just wash them off with an old brush and then just uh, rinse them off. So, let's see what the instructions say first. Starting with the cockpit, which is usual for air things. And let's find these parts then. Once you've cut your parts out, best thing to do then is to take a sanding stick, either one like this or like that, either's good. And what I tend to try to do is I try to get any big bit off with a knife, just a little. But if you're not very good with knives, you're not used to using them, don't do that, just sand it instead. And then I can just give it a little sand there. So instead of using the knife, for that there, as you can see, you would just sand it off. A bit more there. And that's where she were connected. Connected, both nice and smooth, ready for gluing. And on that one, I like these kind of sanding sticks where they've got a roughish and then a really smooth, especially them on sponge ones. Nice, but I don't think I can get them anywhere. These ones, unless I've made my own really. Just 
cut a big one down. And two parts now ready for gluing. Like so. Now you can either use a glue like this, a rubber contactor. You've got Tamiya cement, which is a thicker version of what I'm going to use. As you can see, it's got quite thick. It's still thin though. It's not exceedingly thin. And then you've got the good old. Here is the one. Should be one in here somewhere. Let's show you. Well, ah, oh, there's one. I still keep these because they always come in handy, especially for when you're gluing certain parts. But the good old. Umbro poly cement. You get this size tube and that when you uh, do a uh, starter set from Perfect. What I'll do, it, I'll do instead is I, use, I prefer, this is my favourite, Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. So take it, the glue part, sit it on like that so it's in place and you just take some of excess off because you don't want too much. Tap, tap it there, tap it there, tap it there, just the parts where it's on. Give it a little press just to make sure it sits into it. And that you can see now is glued. That's all you have to do. If you ever end up where you stick a part and you put it in the wrong place or you just make a mistake with it, I've done it loads, I think everybody has. If you get Temiar Extra Thin and just run it down the seam where you've glued before with the Temiar Extra Thin, it does tend to allow you to pull the part, the pieces apart after a few seconds as it virtually reactivates it all again. It does help. Just going to paint inside these wheel wells with a bit of green. Just so a bit of different colour on it. Right, I'll leave these to dry for a short while, just so that uh, when I come to start handling and messing with them again, I'm not going to take the paint off. I should be fine now. Right, I'm going to start painting my cockpit details, but before I do, just a tip for you what I do. I get up pictures, I've got a tablet here, it's an old tablet that I've got, and I get up pictures online of the aircraft type that I want to paint, and I can see then where to paint certain knobs red and stuff like that, and it gives you an idea of the colour as well. As you can see there, cockpits, you can see the seat were all metal, there were no cushioning, they're all like it, and it followed the seat, followed the same colour as the cockpit itself and you can get a really close up one like that and it gives you an idea of what colours you meant you should well you should be kind of trying to follow a bit that's if you want to keep it as authentic as you possibly can but just a tip for you that right I'm painting some of the details picking out the bits that you've got in the cockpit and I'm using Vallejo Black as you can see just just picking up the surface detail the raised stuff there's, there's not a lot you can paint on this I believe this is radio or maybe something like it I don't know just picking up the tiny buttons and stuff like that on it I'm using a bit of Vallejo Silver for that as well and now I'm just going to dry brush 
the bit of that Vallejo silver around the edges, especially around the seat and where your feet would be in the cockpit. And then that way it's going to put a bit more colour definition, a, a little bit of worn edging look. Now I'm just adding a bit of like panel line wash here. Made up my own, it was a bit of Royal and Finners. And I liberally put it everywhere and now I'm just cleaning excess out. And then that way it puts a little bit of depth into the what you see in the cockpit. Just painting up the figure, a little bit of Vallejo khaki, just a quick one width figure, it's just to get a little bit of size definition when you look into the cockpit and at the plane itself. It's not a bad figure with a uniform, but the face is a, a little bit rubbish to be honest. Bit of brown, just to do for these leather boots, his gloves, that kind of thing, just to make a bit of difference. That's Vallejo. Uh, flesh, I think it's the flat one, and I'm using Mr. Mart's softener. Uh, no, that's setter. Sorry, Mr. Mart's setter, just so I can put these decals on a cockpit. I'm grabbing the decals with my tweezers just so I can actually uh, place them directly, rather than trying to hold everything. And but these decals look absolutely lovely they, they, it went straight into place it didn't fold uh, I'm quite impressed with this decal I'm hoping the rest of them are going to be the same it is nice and all I do is I push it into place I use my tweezer force just to make sure it goes exactly where I want and I know it's hard to see but you can just see I'm just pressing it with the cotton bud into place soaking up the any extras, uh, extra from the Mr. Mark softener the pilot, when I pour him in, he didn't seem to want to go in. I really had to force him in, and in all honesty, I don't think it's really well designed for it. I mean, you could see if you push him down so his feet go down, then he sits apart at seat, and it'll do. There it is glued in. Hang on a second. There you go. That's a bit better. You can see. It, it, it's nice enough. I did a little bit of touching up on his head where some of the paint had rubbed off. And I'd always put my gear stick in last because I always break these if I don't. They're very fine and I, I just I can't do them waiting. I always break them. So I just place it in at end, put a little tiny dob of glue in and then put it into place. And you can see they're in when there's a hole at the bottom where it puts through. I just use a bit of normal cement in the pin hole. Well, they always where the locating pins go. And then I just push these together and I know that glue is going to set really really good it always does it's better than the Tammy R extra fade but I always use it especially with this paint as well because you've got a better chance of this glue setting and taking a bind than Tammy R extra fin it never seems to glue very well when there's paint there now I've got that on I'll just run down the seams with this Tammy R extra fin you can press these together and you're going to get a heck of a lot better joint and seal with like this on this uh, seams. Because if you don't use all like that, I tend to find some of the seams pop open a bit. A little bit at the back, that's it. You have to be careful with Tammy Alex roughing because it can sometimes go on your fingers when you're pressing stuff in because it's so, it runs like water really. All I'm doing here is gluing the bit of the edge section you can see and there is two locating type circles with it when you, you do it. One's bigger than the other so you can't get it wrong and it lead, makes it so that they both fit perfectly where you've got the, uh, I don't know what they're called but I suppose it's for air cooling, whatever it is, they, they fit perfectly. I'm using Tammy R Extra Fin Cement because I find it runs into stuff like this without you worrying too much about getting glue everywhere. Just don't seem to want to take at the minute. Press it again. Yeah, that's a bit better. This is the cover. There's two machine guns that I've previously fitted and just painted with a bit of uh, Tammy R gun metal. But these don't want to see. Don't seem to want to click in as a thing. So I'm having to just. Pull it apart a bit there, 
it's like the machine guns are catching pull it apart there oh there you go straight in I'll just uh, pull that in place I'll just use a bit of Tamiara again this is why I like Tamiara it's just thin cement it goes into any type of little seam gap joint and and it does a lovely glowing job this is the uh, Tamiya thicker version I'm using this on this bit here because I want to make sure I get a good seal because this is the only bit that's holding that in there and if it comes off once the engine cover cow whatever it is goes on then it's going to be impossible to re-glow and that's the engine cover cow placed over just put a bit of cement right edge just so it uh, glows to it and yep and all the parts are fitting together perfectly they really are the wings here just put a bit of normal glue on first and that way you're going to get a nice good bond seal because it is a good glue when you get this stuff in and any of these the humbro version the the revel the uh, tammy r1 and any of them aks they all do them and they're fantastic but once you've got it in like that just to help it i just run down this forward at the seam and if i run around it all and just so that i can just press the pieces together and i know they're going to glow right on the seam <laughs> this is <laughs> you're going to see later i've made a mistake here and i realized it later but i've drilling out for what i believe is for the uh, is it fuel tank or underneath and i've not i've read the instructions wrong and i'm actually drilling out for the stand i haven't got a stand but you'll see later i'll rectify that just put the wings in place they just clip straight in really nice a little bit of a tight fit at the bottom but then again that's better that's a little bit of a seam for the wings so but you do get the plastic dust stretch a bit at times when it's been in and you just pull it up a bit there you go you got you got to hold it in place for a, a couple of minutes though when you're doing this this will get rid of most of the seam if it don't pull up naturally and you're actually forcing it because that we're only just slightly touching it up if you're forcing it up you, now you've got to stop the tail wings just a little bit of tummy are extra thin in them and then they're glued in place and just press it just to make sure that the glue is bound because it melts the plastic a little tiny bit does the tammy are extra cement extra thin cement and putting the wheel in place again a little bit of the better glue i'm gonna have to change the brush head on that because it's too big but put the wheel in place and I like to use a better glue when I'm doing all that because it's getting strained more. There you go. I also put, well, I didn't, you don't see it because the camera shut off, but I also put the uh, arrestor hook underneath in as well. And the landing gear is very easy, three parts, and they just go together. Like that. And they're quite a strong one when they do. I nearly used my own cement there actually. I'll just leave them to dry. And this is me rectifying my mistake. The actual fuel tank there you see sits underneath in a square hole. So those two bits there, I'll just give it a bit of a sandwich. I've just took that off. what I'll use here is some Vallejo plastic putty I've had this for ages literally and it's brilliant for anything like this tiny seams gaps and it comes with a really fine nozzle applicator with it because of it you can actually just dip it in nice like this 
but it does take a long time to dry. It's better if you can do it and then just leave it for a, a day so that when it dries then properly you can sand it. If not, it just rips it to bits. Here's cockpit. Took me about an hour to do all that masking. Absolutely did my head in. But I'm hoping it's going to come out nice when I spray it. But it is a lot of masking to do that. Right, I'm just spraying up some Vallejo black primer on it just so it's got a nice base coat for the paint to take to This time I'm going to use a bit of Tamiya flat white and I'm just using it to just put a bit of a different colour into the centre of the uh, panels. As you can see it just, just gives a little bit of variation in it. Just makes it a little bit better I think. Just When you start and spray the main coats, the base coats, you, you see these little bit of different colour variations come out a bit. You don't have to do this. This is just me just being a bit finicky picky. Wanted to get a bit of uh, difference into it. But this is Vallejo stone. I do not have the proper IGN colours at all. I, I, I'm going to have to get some if I'm going to carry on building IGN aircraft. But I... I do like it, I think it's not far off the colour. I had a look online and a lot of them is a very grey, greeny type of undercoat, well underside, so I'll use that. This is the uh, camo pattern. All I've done is took a bit of Tamiya tape and I've just cut some wave pattern in it. Just stick it down the side and hopefully I'll be, it'll recreate that pattern a bit better. than it would if I were just doing it freehand. Because freehand's okay, but every now and then you make a complete mistake with it when you do. But I do, as you can see, paint all, uh, not paint, sorry, uh, mask all of the underside, so it's all protected. This is NATO green from Tamiya, and I've just put a little bit of white into it, just, it is on a little bit, just to tone it off a bit so it's not as dark. Again, because I haven't got the Japanese colours for their aircraft from World War Two, so I'm having to make do with what I can find. And there's the finished paint. You can see the pattern as it shows you on the box and on the aircraft. I don't think that's too bad. Maybe I, I should have added more curves, but I don't think it's too bad. All I've done here is a bit of masking tape around the nose just to protect it, put that towel over, uh, towel, uh, yeah, paper towel, and it just helps protect it a bit more. And I'm just splaying that in a, a black and a blue Tamiya mix, so it's got a little bit of a blue tint to it. Again, Mr. Mark Setter, and I'm just been putting decals on. These go on absolutely fantastic. To be honest, there's some of the best decals that I've had off of Airfix, but saying that, it is the new style decals, so you can't complain with them. The the fantastic Nara fixes decals. But they do stand out well. And they do lay down very flat. I have got a bit of silvering on the ones with the red lines on the wings. But hopefully when I spray it with a gloss coat that'll help disappear that a bit. But most of them have gone down and you can't even see any silvering whatsoever. But I just push me roundels as they call whatever you want to call them the japanese add into place and i just press everything down again with cotton buds stuff like that and i also tend to if i can i try to wipe off any excess with a microfiber cloth that tends to work well 
you just got to be careful that you don't smudge the decal when you do it. On the underside, again, very similar. These also have a number as well underneath them at the side of the Japanese red circles. Number 34s. It's a shame you don't get another uh, set of decals in this kit. No, no, you know, like, so you get two or three different variants because I've not got two and I can only do it the same. I'll have to see if I can find some more decals that I can use to for it or make me own up. Again, just push it into place using a brush or your tweezers, whatever you need to. And then you'll just have to mop away any excess of that Mr. Mark setter. So if you don't, it'll stay. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that, that's my phone. And just wipe away any excess. Just to make sure no staining occurs and it's all off of the decal. Yeah, that's it, it's lovely. And just doing the last side of them, just to make sure it's all pressed in on that one, yep. Yeah. yeah, I wish every company's decals were like this, and I wish uh, Airfix's decals before they've changed them over to what they're using now were like these, because in all honesty, the old style that they had were awful decals. But then again, Tammy Arse, the old Tammy Arse, my goodness, they were thick. Just painting up the wheels, doing little touch-ups of stuff that needs doing, odd little bits here and there, the silver's been done on, the landing struts, that kind of stuff, just to make sure it's all ready for when I start doing uh, my weathering, my, my pin washes and stuff like that. Can be finicky to paint these and a nice small brush like what I've got here, a double zero. I bought these from the range in UK. They've got a lot of paint brushes and stuff in the range. This time I'm just going to try scoring along some of these panel lines through these big decals. I'm not going to do out like that with the little ones because most of them don't even go near them. But the big ones I'm just scoring through it to see if it'll all, it take a little bit of the panel line wash that I'm going to make up. Yeah. You've got to be careful. I need a different method than knife because if you slip with knife, it leaves a score mark. So my panel iron wash is just some Winsor Newton or whichever one it is I've got. I've got quite a few brands, but the, the slightly better ones, not the cheap oils. So it's just a bit of black oil paint mixed with white spirits, thin dang quite a lot and I just excessively paint it over the top of where I want it to go just a lot of it so once I've done all of the panel lines I get some of these face cloth things whatever they are I've nicked off my daughter and wife over the years and I just wipe it off always wipe away if you can from where, so it, it depicts where the air flow would be because any that gets left behind looks like it's just normal muck weathering and it helps actually it makes it look better but this way as you can see I put a gloss coat on by the way I should have said that and then that way it comes off easier rather than you struggling to get it off because it won't come off if you didn't have gloss coat most of it would stay behind as you could see there when I mix my paint up there in the it, the pigment still settled to the bottom so you have to keep giving it a swirl round just to make sure you get a good bit of pigment in the actual uh, paintbrush when you put your dip in one thing I should have said is when I'm cleaning this off I just use straight spirits uh, white spirits uh, or terps whichever way you want to call it but whatever you use to thin your paint use the exact same one but we obviously we know painting just straight neat to actually wipe it off with when you dip in with your little cloth or your cotton buds that's just a quick, my quickest, easiest way I do panel lining. What I'm doing here is doing weathering. As you can see on the other wing, there's that more brown stain tint. And what I do is I put a few drops of it's, uh, I think it's burnt umber this one, and just around, mostly around where the uh, panel lines are. 
I'd have just put a drop and then you dip a flat headed brush like this one into some spirits the same what you, you normally use for uh, when you're doing any panel lining and that what I've showed you and you just brush them down and you just keep doing that until you get the effect that you want always remember to take off any excess clean your brush and then you could just go again and you do this until you get the same all over the model and I do it on all that model as well and I'm using a bit of sponge I'm just taking a bit of uh, black paint and I'm just faintly dipping the end just to make it look like there's been chips, scrapes, scratches stuff like that on the end of the propeller and I find this is the easiest than trying to do it with a brush and I do the same way, I've got these decals down here and then that way it looks like paint, chips and all it's just showing through what would have been proper paint which was the yellow one it's a quick and easy way to just weather a, a model and this time I'm using the silver paint and doing the same again with a brush, uh, sponge, just dabbing at it just make it look a, a bit more weathered, a bit nicer I'll go down the leading edge as well on the wings and it just makes it look like paint being chipped all the way down then to the bare metal and this is the propeller as you can see I've done the chipping on this and it does look well I, I think it does anyway and the front of the aircraft yeah I, I, I quite like it it's quick it's easy and I know a lot of people like to paint it by brush and I've done it as well but yeah it's a quick easy way and now I'm just going to start and glue the last of the pieces in I've got my uh, un undercarriage and wheels to glue in I'm just using Tammy R's glue the normal stuff rather than the extra thing because there's more chance of it grabbing where there's paint on the actual aircraft with that so and you just push these into place they do not sit straight they sit on I think it says an 86 degree angle something like that so when they're in you just have to make sure they're pressing up against those little flaps and they're fine now I'm using uh, an old brush just to put a bit of that Tammy eye glue in because the brush head on the other is just way too big. And these are the little tiny doors for where the wheels when they go in they sit back down to help cover it. And they are small parts then. I did break one of them and I had to glue it back together. What a nightmare. And stick the fuel tank on. And that's all the underside done. All of these parts I've weathered as well as I was doing all of us. I just had them separate on those little grab sticks you can see there. But yeah. It all fits in very well. No problem trying to put any of them in. And this time it's the propellers going on. Don't matter about having a finer brush this time. But if you do use one of them other brushes, it does clean off with some... Uh, water and just make sure you give it a good clean the brush but I wouldn't use it for hotels then glue again after so I'll just keep that one as it is for gluing of them this is Tamiya's flat uh, varnish or gloss whatever you want to call it but it's the flat version and it just tones everything back down from being super shiny I give all the actual kit a good coat of this that way it seals all the weathering in and it, it, it just looks better in my view when it's a flat finish rather than a gloss finish I'm just sticking canopy on here I've just put tiny amounts of glow on the actual aircraft and I'm just sticking it onto it it's a nice fit canopy it's not 100% perfect but it's not far off just a tiny gap on a couple of bits but canopies for some reason never ever seem to be perfect 
and I don't know what this is. It's on um, the pictures I've seen online. It's definitely not a weapon. It must be air, air foot speeds or whatever. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. But anyway, this is what it is. It's just painted the same colour as the main aircraft. And then the very tip is silver. But like I say, I've looked online and the, the loads of them have got it and that's what it is. The actual guns are further in. The cannons. Obviously the machine guns are just above where the propeller is, what you've seen. And I'm just doing some smoke effects now from where the cannons were. Uh, well, I've used uh, AK weathering pencil on it. And to be honest, I... I don't really like the smart one. I don't think it's that good a one. I don't think I'll do this again. I prefer graphite pencil or uh, not pencil uh, dust. I think it's a lot better. But it, it sufficed and it's done the job. Well, she's done. And in all honesty, it's lovely like a kit. It really is. I've really, really enjoyed doing this kit. The detail on it, I, I think it's fantastic. The decals are great. And I know you should expect it from uh, more modern type decals, but it is a 10 year old kit. I believe it's 10, it might even be a bit more than that. 2011 so it's an 11 year old kit actually it's an 11 year old kit and honestly the tooling and the details are exceedingly nice what a problem getting the pilot into his seat and to sit down properly but that could have just been me not trying to put him in right but I don't think it was other than that, I don't think there's any real major issues. There's no flash on it hardly at all in the kit, or or, or on the sprues with the kit itself. Like I say, I really enjoyed it, and for the amount that this these kits are, about nine quid. It's a good few hours. A good well, it took me probably a couple of days or more to build this one and then paint it all up and weather it. And I'm well well impressed. I hope you liked watching me build it and I hope uh, you'll watch me next time and I'd be grateful if you'll like and subscribe to my channel because every viewing helps and, and more than anything every subscriber helps as well and every like that you give me inspires me to make more as they say there you, go. Look at that. you can even see all detailing yeah. very nice Right, I'll see y'all later.